Good morning and welcome to this week's Carolina Focus. Joining me this morning from Animal Care and Control is our good friend, Melissa Nicely. Good morning and welcome. Good morning, Linda. Thanks for having me this morning. Oh, it's always a pleasure to have you join us. And we always have so much to talk about with the animals and all of the things going on at Animal Care and Control. But before we really get to the meat of our conversation, I'm so curious, how is the kitten room doing? I'm so glad that you ask because it's one of my favorite things to talk about. A very unique new thing that we have at Animal Care and Control and a big shout out to the ASPCA because they gave us great funding to upfit one of our existing spaces to turn it into basically a NICU for kittens. And um, also since then we've had tremendous support from the community in the way of volunteerism and in the way of financial donations, whether it comes to making a financial donation online or just bring supplies by that we need. So a big shout out to everyone who has supported this effort because it is truly life-saving. And I'm going to share some numbers that show you just how life-saving this uh, new addition, uh, new program to our shelter is. So lots of little kittens, sweet little bundles of fur. <laughs> it is. They're, they're amazing at, at this age. So just to kind of review and, and let everybody know what we're talking about mm-hmm. is um, typically from from March until about September into the fall, um, we get the influx of kittens. It's kitten season. It is. We 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 typically have a kitten season, and in most shelters across the country, uh, see the abundance of kittens being born. Um, it all relates back to weather temperatures, mm-hmm. mating seasons. Things like that. So sometimes you have a a warmer winter. It's going to throw the cycle off a little bit and it's going to move. It shifts. Right. So it's very fluid every year. And we have to kind of try to track it as best we can so that we can be prepared for it. Sure. Um, And that's being prepared for saving them. But also then once you save them, that's more homes you need to find. So it's all a big process. Um, Typically... June is Adopt-A-Cat month, Mm -hmm. and the reason that is is because the kittens that are coming in in the spring from these litters typically hit the age of adoption, which is about eight weeks or so around June. So usually that's when you see a spike. It's definitely when we've seen a spike this year. We we kind of started off with a spike of the babies coming in. Then we had a little bit of a drop off and then we the shoe fell kind of. The the shoe dropped and then we have kittens coming out out of our ears and we've really not hit the downslope just yet. So we still have an abundance of kittens. But with the addition of this nursery, what we're able to do with this NICU kitten nursery um, is it's equipped to take care of those baby kittens that come in that are orphans Mm -hmm. and they have to be bottle fed in order to survive. So let's kind of review back to what we used to do before the kitten nursery. We used to do traditional fostering. Sure. Which, by the way, we still do. So Mm -hmm. if you want to take, you know, some, a litter of kittens home and bottle feed them. If, if you're equipped to do that with your schedule, mm-hmm. they have to be fed every two to three hours. We can still do that, and we would love for you to do that. If you just want to foster the older kittens, which they're no longer on the bottle, but they're not quite, they don't make weight enough yet to be adopted. Mm-hmm. We, we call them the tweeners. <laughs> you can, oh. And they're fun. That's when they're starting to play and everything. You can foster them. So we definitely still have um, a need for foster homes as well. Um, that information that we're talking about can all be found on our website at animals.cmpd.org. Um, you just go on fostering, and then it's also going to show Show you how to become a volunteer for the kitten nursery. So what the kitten nursery does is the pool of people that have the ability in their life and in their work schedule to feed baby kittens every two to three hours is limited. Mm-hmm. So what this nursery does is it opens it up. So it's a bunch of litters of kittens in there, about approximately 30 different kennels that can house anywhere from one to four kittens in there that's a lot so of kittens there's a lot and i think i'm saying that right it's about 25 to 30 crates that are are kind of lining up that area and then we also have incubators in there um, one is oh. equipped with oxygen so it's really amazing you know just how how the setup with this is so you're saving a lot we of do kittens. so what happens is um when we first started it there was a plea to the community to help because right. obviously we don't have the staffing to take care of, which is why we have to do foster homes in order to save them. That's right. And we did that plea on this program. We did. Months we did. Ago. And man, the pleas 
worked. We had over 2,000 people sign up to come and help us bottle feed kittens. And I'm just getting little chills about it because it's just exciting. Every morning I come in, I see cars in the parking lot and I know that they're kitten nursery volunteers. Mm -hmm. When I leave at night and go to the parking lot, there are cars in the parking lot. Even when I left last night after an event, I I left at like 10 and there are cars in the parking lot and I know they're kitten volunteers. And so a big shout out again to all the folks that are coming in, giving their valuable time to take care of these babies. Um, It's making a difference. And the numbers that I wanted to share are um, last week I did some research and the neonates, which is what you call these little bottle feeding babies, Mm -hmm. um, they We have saved 53% more of them this year than we did at the same time last year. That is astonishing. It is amazing. And um, the other good news is, is that like we talked about, Linda, the more that you save, the more you have to find homes for. Absolutely. So we started the Smitten for Kittens campaign May 1st, and I ran the numbers last week, and we were at 550 kittens adopted since May 1st. I got to guess that over the weekend, that probably shot up to... At least another 30 or 40. So you're close to 600. I I would say we're pushing about 600 kitten adoptions since May 1st. I'm flabbergasted. That is wonderful. Those those adoption numbers are really fantastic. It's really exciting. And, and you know what's, it's so interesting about it. And, and, you know, Linda, I've been, I've, we've been doing shows for years. Yes. And what's so challenging about, these kittens and saving their lives and then transitioning into the topic of spay neuter Mm -hmm. is you see how beautiful these kittens are. And Mm -hmm. we're talking about, wow, 600 of them have found homes in our community and that's all great. And so when you talk about spay neuter and you talk about how we need to keep these kittens from coming in, they almost collide a little bit because you're like, but we're saving them and we're finding them homes. But But you, you have a break point. We do. And that's what we're getting to is that we, while this is a great program and I see it staying in our future because I don't think we're going to run out of supply mm-hmm. probably as soon as we need to, <laughs> we still can't save them all in the community. I and know. um, And so we do have to transition back into that thing is that no matter how strong our adoption programs are, no matter how strong our relationships with rescues and the Humane Society and then all the fantastic work that Humane Society and um, Carrie Bernstein over there and and her group with uh, Spay Neuter Charlotte, tremendous work on on spaying and neutering our, in our community, and all the other organizations that are out there supporting spay and neuter as well um, that we partner with, and, and then all the efforts of the TNR that goes on. And, and TNR is for those who are wondering, you know, what what's TNR if you haven't heard about it? That's the feral cats or the community cats that live in our neighborhoods. They're not owned, but yet they exist. Oh, um, yeah. That is, it's actually. You know, it's it's actually not a bad thing for the environment. Some people consider them nuisance. Some people don't. But, you know, from a health public health standpoint, as long as they're neutered and as long as they have that rabies vaccination that they get the time they're neutered and their vaccinations, it's actually not a public health threat of any kind. Um, and so when these TNR programs, which TNR stands for trap, neuter, release, mm-hmm. when when these cats are TNR, is what we call it, you know, it's really actually back out. You know, they they really can help the environment, too. And they're going to keep more cats from coming in. Right. And if it if that makes sense, Um, it's kind of a vacuum effect. Right. Um, So all of these programs that I've talked about are all things that we're working to keep down the amount of, of of felines that are coming into the shelters. And I think you're doing extraordinary work. And by doing everything you're doing, you are reducing the number of kittens. We are. There is a reduction in our intake from year to year. And mm-hmm. that's despite the population growth of Charlotte. And I know we've talked about that a lot on the show, but since there may be new listeners, what typically happens in especially urban cities is the when the human population increases – especially to the quickness and and the level that Charlotte is growing, Mm -hmm. your pet population follows that trend. Mm -hmm. So typically what happens in the municipal shelters of these cities is that your your intake of animals is going to go up. Well, ours is decreasing every year. So that means that not only the programs that we're doing at Animal Care and Control, but again, reaching out to all those partnerships and then also the community, the folks who are adopting from shelters and 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 giving donations to support spay neuter and things like that everybody's effort and again i always say this 
but it's a village. It takes a village. It so does. everybody working together for the same goal is really working in our community. And we're seeing the decrease in the intake, thankfully, even though Charlotte's population trends upwards. And and that is what's gratifying is you see the results of your hard work and you're seeing these animals, one, being placed, less animals coming in. So, you know, that is so gratifying. And having the kitten NICU unit mm -hmm. where you watch people just show these little animals so much love so that mm -hmm. they can go to good yeah. homes. So I'm going to share another number with you. And we've internally been celebrating it and talking about it and and thought, you know, we just we want to start mentioning it, but we don't want to throw a big party, you know, mm -hmm. or anything like that. But it's a number. Um, it used to be, Linda, years ago, everybody focused on your euthanasia numbers. I know. And they never really saw the number of animals that you're rehoming and the number of animals that you're placing or that you're transferring into rescue. And so everybody was really hung up on the euthanasia number, which I really get. I, I do totally too. understand. I do but too. what the movement has been um, even with the national organizations like the ASPCA and the Humane Society of the United States, um, all of the national organizations, what you're really looking at now, and especially with our ASPCA partnership, is we look at the live release rate. Mm -hmm. And the live release rate is of all the animals coming in, how many of them are going back out? And that's by way of adoption, by way of being transferred to another organization for adoption. Mm -hmm. It could be that somebody's lost their pet. Their pet comes in and we rehome it back to the owner again. So all of those numbers, um, you know, fall into this uh, algorithm, if you will, and, and you, you get your live release rate. So that's the amount of the animals coming in and then how many of them are going back out. So about five, four years ago, when we started the partnership with the ASPCA, animal care and control was in the 40 percentile-ish. Um, as, a, as a whole community, we were a little bit higher than that. Just last week, we were running some numbers, and we are up to about 75% right now. That's fantastic. And it doesn't mean that our work is done. No. But you are making tremendous progress, and you have to be very proud of that progress with the hard work. It's really exciting. It's a really exciting. We know there's still lots of work to do. But looking at that number and knowing that, and this is the part, you know, that we really want to want to make sure people are clear. We are municipal shelter, which means we are open admission, which means by law we have to take anything that a Mecklenburg County resident brings us. Mm -hmm. If they can no longer take care of their pet anymore, we can't say no. We can't say we're full. Right. It's that way with all municipal tax-funded organizations. So we still are going to have animals that are not safe to put up for public adoption. Right. Animals who come in who are old who are, have ailments that we cannot medically help. So there are going to be euthanasias. So it's not like this shelter will ever be no... A zero kill. You, or, you and can't we don't want to use... We, you know, and we want to stay away from the word kill because we're I moving know. away from that. But euthanasia, there will always probably be some type... We just had someone very dear to me that, that I know very well, and they had to put their dog to sleep yesterday. Well, I'm so and sorry. they came to us to help them with that process. So, again, that was a euthanasia. It was a requested euthanasia. So there's mm -hmm. always going to be that in the municipal sheltering world. Right. Um, because there are just some animals that, to no fault of their own, mm -mm. but they just are not safe to be put up for public adoption and to go back out into our community. So there's always going to be some of that as well. Um, so with that being said, 75% going from in the low 40s i can't remember exactly where we started but just within the four year time period is is showing a lot of promise for a city the size of charlotte that continues to grow that's tremendous it is absolutely amazing to look at those numbers and you have to be so proud of the hard work that's being done and as a municipal shelter you're always going to have some things come your way that you have to deal with yeah. And that that's what, you know, we have to be there to help the community as Without well. Without a doubt. Yes. 
And you do. You do on so many levels, which is going to open up the avenue for our next conversation. (laughs) It's coming. It is because Animal Needs Day is right around the corner. It is. Can you believe that we're in our 11th year of this fundraiser? I remember when we started this because we had a conversation the very first year. So this is amazing. 11 years. And I know that there are folks who are going, what are they talking about? <laughs> so, Melissa, let's let's ha- review. Let's review. Because like we said, Linda, you and I can talk about Animal Needs Day in our sleep because we've done it for 11 years yes, together. So th- <laughs> thank you for that support. I My really pleasure. appreciate it. So Animal Needs Day is a wonderful event um, that is put on by the Great Harvest Bread Company. And um, it's two locations. The owner, Nori, she owns two locations. Um, One is on King's Drive and one is in Ray Road. So those are the businesses that she owns. Um, This was founded by Jeff and Janet Ganong, who were the owners of those two locations for many years until they decided to hang up their aprons and baker's hats last last year and and retire, um, which I now find that they're busier now as they've retired than they were when they owned the bakeries. Well, but. more folks who retire <laughs> find themselves yeah. busier because now they have more time to do right. the things that they absolutely love. But they were wonderful supporters. Yes. Yeah, so this was the they founded this idea, put it in motion 11 years ago. Um, and the the event has bloomed and, and grown over the years. And so what it is, is the Great Harvest Bread Company puts on the event. It's called Animal Needs Day, and it's K-N-E-A-D-S. And obviously, there's a tie with the bread there. And of the, course. The reason is, is that um, Nori, the bread, uh, the Great Harvest owner, she donates all the ingredients to bake approximately a 1,000 loaves of bread, give or take. Um, her staff donates their time for free that day. They come in in the wee hours of the morning. I love this company so much. I could never do the hours that they do. It's amazing to me. I know. Like the hours they get up in order to get the dough and to lay it out. And it's very technical. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. enamored every year that we work with them. I learn more and more. Um, they come in overnight. They bake their hearts out <laughs> of this bread. And they are baking, baking, baking. They do. They even use both locations to help get more bread available for us to sell. So that's the next step. So ingredients are covered, the bread is made, then it's our turn. So we uh, call on our volunteers who are amazing and come out every year to support us. Staff members come in. We make it a big festival so that a lot of people have fun. They can bring their dogs. There's a lot of dog-related vendors. We even have a massage bus coming this year. What? I know. It's, it's crazy. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. But so what you do is you mark your your calendar now. It's Mm -hmm. it's coming up on the 27th. That's Sunday, August 27th from 10 until 5. So you have a bunch of hours to come down there. Get Um, your bread because it's fabulous. Yeah, And the one thing I want to make sure, if everybody is familiar with this event, if anyone is, we're changing locations this year. We're going back to the uptown area. We're going to go to the King's Drive location. That's in the King's Court Shopping Center at 901 South King's Drive. Um, So you come in. You donate $10. Mm -hmm. You get to choose a loaf of bread to take home with you. And the bread is fantastic. (laughs) That could be a whole other conversation in its own. Yes, it could. So we we should move on. Uh, (laughs) Or we're going to be sitting here salivating about the bread. I know. We haven't had lunch. (laughs) I know. So so you make the donation. You get your bread. But that's not all you can do. So, and, and the important thing about the donation and what makes this unique or this event more unique almost than any other event that I'm aware of, is that 100% of the money from your donation, if you donate for bread, if you just make a financial donation, or if you um, are a sponsor, Mm -hmm. um, because there's a bunch of sponsors that are joining us, 100% of that money goes straight to fund our spay-neuter clinics. That is amazing. Everybody donates their time, the ingredients, the location, their labor. It's fabulous. And you get to go home with a wonderful loaf of bread and knowing that you've done something right. really good for the community. Right. You not only get that great feeling of the support, because I know when I make a contribution, a financial contribution, I feel really great in, mm-hmm. in that I was able to help. Right. But not only do you get that feeling, but you also get some bread. So it's really a win-win without a doubt and the nice thing is is that a hundred percent of this money and this is what's important for everyone to know if you live in mecklenburg county and you or someone you know 
needs assistance getting their pet spayed or neutered for whatever reason, Mm -hmm. we, Animal Care and Control, have a program that we provide free spay-neuter surgeries. And it's pretty simple. You go to our website. Again, that's animals.cmpd.org. You click on spay-neuter, and there's an application form. Now, we get no money from our actual operating budget to run this program. For years, we've run this program since way before I've been there, and that was 11 years ago before this event. Mm-hmm. Um, we get we run this program based on this fundraiser plus any private donations or grants that may come our way throughout the year. This fundraiser is responsible for covering about eight months of the 12 months of the year. So this fundraiser is very huge. Not only it's not really benefiting animal care and control as much as it's benefiting the community and the pet owners in the community. Mm -hmm. It's benefiting animal care and control because obviously spay neutering is cutting down on the amount of animals that are coming into the shelter. Absolutely. And if you have less animals coming in, that just makes everybody's life easier. And as a responsible pet owner, you don't have to worry about unwanted pet pregnancy. Right. So just an overview Animal Needs Day, August 27th, 10 to 5, at the King's uh, King's Drive location, 901 South King's Drive. Bring your $10 or mm-hmm. more if you'd or rather more. have more uh, bread. That's okay, too. We will we will definitely help you with that. You can bring um, more. $10 donation. You get a loaf of bread. 100% of the proceeds support our spay-neuter fund, which assists anybody in Mecklenburg County with uh, spay-neuter surgery for their pet. Let me ask you this, um, because you have all the volunteers there and the people baking bread. Is it cash only? It is not. And that's a great question. We take check, we take cash, and then you can also use a credit card. You can't make it any easier than that. And a number of the businesses will be closed on Sunday, so it'll make it a little easier to get in and out. You can bring your pets. It is. You can. And there's a nice greenway right across the street Mm -hmm. um, if you want to take your animal for a walk. I want to mention this because I want to give a big shout out again to Jeff and Janet for not only their support over the 11 years, a big shout out to Nori for deciding that this event was something that she wanted to continue Um, and all of her team. And I have to give a shout out to Matthew because he's our coordinator with the bread for all these pre events that we're doing. Uh And um, he's been great to work with. And we've worked with him for 11 years as well. But here's the thing, Jeff and Janet, believe in this program so much that we're offering a carb free option this year. What? If you don't want the bread, then if you go online um, or attend one of our events and you make just a donation to the spay neuter fund, they are matching it dollar for dollar up to $2,500 as, as their gift to the, to the program. They are wonderful people. They really are. They've helped you with this event for years. They've actually helped create this event, and they're still giving. They are. And um, so if that's something that you're interested in, it's very easy to do. Uh, You don't even have to leave your home. You can log onto our website and then go to the donation page, and it'll take you. You want to click the spay neuter because that's where all this funding is going to support. Mm-hmm. And then just write animal needs, stay donation in the in the little comments area, and that'll get it uh, credited towards the event so that we know the match, how to do the match. Absolutely. But I'm telling you, folks, if you want some carbs, the bread <laughs> is the way to go. I know. I love this match, but it's really hard to not tell people that you need it. A couple of people came by a pre-promotion event that we did at Sycamore Brewery um, this week, and and they just put something in the jar. And I'm like, wait, 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 don't you want your bread? And and a lot of them were like, no, I'm good. But it's um, it's it's great, uh, all the support. And, you know, we've been doing these pre-promotion adoptions mm-hmm. um, with uh, Good Road Cider Works. And we did Pet Supermarket there in Dilworth. Uh, we were at Sycamore. And we have a couple more coming up at Legion Brewery, and then we're going to be uptown um, at Trade and Tryon at the Square um, uh, later in the week, the week leading up into the event. So check our Facebook page out. It's got lots of details on our events calendar of where we're going to be, and we'll have bread samples, and we'll have some to sell, or Wonderful. you can pre-order for the event day. Well, that makes it easy. Yeah. You can pre-order what you want, and in case you don't get there quickly enough, what you want will be there. It will be. It's a, a lot of people do that. You can also do that on our website. Wonderful. Now, let's talk about this massage bus that's coming. Right. So can I just give a quick shout-out to some of our sponsors? Sure. So we have... Um, 
uh, pet, we have pet partner sponsors, uh, Monica Weymouth PR, who's going to be there. She's been a longtime supporter of this event. Um, so a big shout out to Monica. Um, she's uh, a very supporter of the shelter in many, many ways. Um, then um, Cindy Schock, who is a realtor with Remax, she's joining us as a pet partner sponsor as well. So we welcome Cindy to the Animal Needs Day family. Um, and then we have a health coach who's going to be there, and she's a pet partner sponsor. She's joining us. Her name is Tracy D. Canterbury, and you can find all of their information. Of course, they're going to be there at the event um, on our Facebook page as well. We're linking to them. Um, and then we have Lots and lots of, of in-kind sponsors. VCA Stony Creek um, is is uh, donating some stuff for an in-kind sponsorship. Umbrella Pets going to be our PA and our entertainment DJ for the event. And then um, also we have a, a, a photographer for the event um, that's donating their services, Flawless Capture Photography. And then tons and tons of vendors are going to be joining us. And yes, one of them is a massage bus. So if you're feeling like... You want to get out, you want to get some bread, but yet you might have a few kinks in your back, then you definitely want to join us as well because we have that vendor that's coming along as well. Well, my question was going to be, all right, is the massage for the owners or is the massage for the puppy dog? (laughs) It is for the owners. Who needs it sometimes with the puppy dogs, let me tell you. You can find them. They're Pamper Us Mobile Massage Service. So doesn't that sound like a lot of fun? Oh, it does. (laughs) It sounds wonderful. Now, you you can bring your pets to this event. We can. So uh, you can bring them. They are obviously not allowed to stroll through the bakery. Uh, no, we would not <laughs> want that. So you might want to either bring somebody with you or else we will have volunteers that are standing around and are happy and qualified and trained to hold your animal for you while you go in and uh, make your donation and get your bread. Fantastic. The bread is great. The donation is $10. Um what did you raise last year? Do you remember? Yeah, we raised sixteen thousand two hundred dollars last year, and we'd like to do a little bit better this we'd year. We'd love to do a little bit better, and um, you know, we're a little worried that people are going to get confused and go to the wrong venue. Mm-hmm. So we want to just mention that again. For years, it's been down at Ray Road, but this year it's uptown. So uh, we're a little more centralized for everyone. It's at the King's Drive location of the Great Harvest Bread Company. And that is at 901 South King's Drive in Charlotte. And the hours again? Um, We are going to be there um, from 9 until 5 o'clock. And there will be bread, bread, bread. Bread, bread, bread. (laughs) And it's cash check and credit card so yes. you can't go wrong you can bring your pet you are we going to have any adoption there will be so we are going to have some of our dogs on the run volunteers that are going to have some of our dogs there and then we've also invited and reached out to all of the rescue groups and the humane society as well and we're still confirming who's going to be there and who's not um we're also going up against um charlotte pride that so a oh, lot of people yeah. that we normally will partner with you know, have have obligated to that event, which is great. We love to see that oh, event absolutely. getting supported as well. So I know a lot of the rescues are involved with that as well. But mm-hmm. we have uh, reached out and invited all of our rescue partners to come. Um, so there definitely will be some animals there. We're just not sure which groups for sure yet. No worries. And people can always contact you at the shelter. Yes, absolutely. If you have any questions about any of the animals we have for adoption, visit our website again mm-hmm. at animals.cmpd.org. Um, click on adoption and it'll take you right uh, to show you all the animals it's updated once an hour so it's it's very update um, updated then also if you have any questions you can call 311 absolutely and folks if you feel the need for a new animal in your life look at the shelters look at animal care and control adopt when you can It's a wonderful thing. And please, spay, neuter. This event helps reduce the numbers considerably so we don't have strays running the streets and we don't have any unnecessary... Yes. We're just going to leave it like that. It's Sunday morning. We're not going to beat that. So, (laughs) Melissa Nicely from Animal Care and Control, Animal Needs Day, right around the corner. It is. Again, it's coming up on Sunday, August the 27th. It's going to be at the Great Harvest Bakery at King's Court Shopping Center on King's Drive in 
near Uptown Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's going to be 10 to 5. So come see us. It's going to be a lot of fun. Come see them and get your bread, make a donation. It's it's a win-win celebration. Melissa, thank you so much for coming in this morning. Thank you for having me, Linda. Good morning and welcome to this week's Carolina Focus. Joining me this morning from Animal Care and Control is our good friend, Melissa Nicely. Good morning and welcome. Good morning, Linda. Thanks for having me this morning. Oh, it's always a pleasure to have you join us. And we always have so much to talk about with the animals and all of the things going on at Animal Care and Control. But before-